is the Loinoreos Farmstead. Director Austin Kingston and his production team intended to make a film based on local rumours of haunting. However, something went wrong. I'm joined by this very man, the last surviving member of the independent film team. Hello. Thank you for letting me tell our story. Of course. The unsuspecting public needs to be warned and informed about all paranormal activity. Indeed. Preserved at St Fagans Museum in Wales, this uh, section here is of the house, as, as you say. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. But it was uh, built roughly around sort of 1850 time and uh, furnished sort of to the stylings of about 1919 to the last occupants of the house. Uh, yeah. uh, the family parlour room, which is this, was uh, essential to the story that we wish to tell. However, we could not film on location. The production team researched some of the uh, background of the house and everything at the local library, but found some uh, very disturbing or interesting accounts of the selected recreation. Accounts, can you tell us some more? It's all down to the fireplace. The focal point of the room. Indeed, yes. Uh, the fire would have been used to add heating to the room, and despite being such a source of warmth and uh, homeliness for its inhabitants, the wood may have, in fact, been cursed. Cursed? It is widely rumoured that the, uh, the very woods this stained oak came from were cursed long ago by a bitter woodsman. It is said that his ghost torments those who chop down his trees. A member of our art department, Liam, got a splinter while he was measuring at St Fagans. Uh, little did he know that the seemingly harmless splinter led to not only his disappearance, but also the disappearance of the whole art department. I assure you, <laughs> we're much safer here with the set piece. Each uh, section of the set has been cleverly faked to mimic elements of the actual room. Although it might appear like the uh, genuine article, it's actually a combination of MDF, wood varnish and the uh, metal finishes there. Could you tell us a little bit more about the roles and responsibilities they had to take on while creating this gorgeous replica? Over the span of a week, the team measured, drew up and uh, built a complete replica of the corner of this of the farmhouse there. Uh, the group had two sessions in the workshop in Barry in South Wales. However, before the construction began, tragedy struck. Uh, Elizabeth, a member of our art department, was taken to A&E with a severe head trauma under suspicious circumstances as well, which is, yeah. One man down, it took two days uh, to build this whole piece, as you see here, between the four of them, they had to sort of split the, the labour then because they were one person short. So it was Eleanor and Owen working on the door piece there mm. and the centre section behind the door and Harry and Liam working on the, on the lovely fire fireplace there. Uh, they were completely unaware of the significance of Liam participating in the fireplace construction. Our art department has been missing for weeks now and all we have left of them is this piece and their video diaries. Which you kindly brought in for us to watch today. Take a look at this last known footage of these poor souls. By the end of the first day, we've got two walls, a door frame, and we've done some painting. Um, so we got quite a lot more done than I thought we were going to. Uh, so we made quite a lot of progress, which was very good. So it's the second day today here at the workshop um, and things are moving quite faster than we expected. Uh, we've got everything up and we're just adding layers of paint to it. We 
who are able to put over the last of the coats of paint and the last aspects of filler and actually realize that we had finished this whole fireplace in nothing but like two and a half days. Was it a mere coincidence that Liam worked on the fireplace, or since the splinter latched onto him, was he drawn into its recreation? Here we have an interview with a St. Fagans employee. What would this room be used for? Well, this room would be parallel, just a sitting room, a utility room. You know, they had a di you had the dining room through there, uh, and the parlour, a little uh, lounge, if you like, in the modern terms, in there. But this would just be the everyday, stack box standard living room. Yes, sir. So, although he was an estate manager, they were fairly rural on farming, as you can see by the farm I don't know. Although he would have had, you know, uh, hands, farm hands. But built by the Earl of Plymouth for his estate manager. Because of course the, their, the family, as I said, they are multi estates, they were moving around on a regular basis. Where the estate would still be here, which was a 104 year estate, it would have to be managed and farmed. We, st we still have uh, tenant farmers on the estate now. Are they more a part of the um, the museum, or are they a part of just no, the, the they estate have itself? No, to do with the museum. They still have their tenancy. This building only came into the museum. I think it was in the eighties. You know, it was still occupied by a tenant farm until then. So it was just next to the museum. Yeah, within the museum estate, the estate, the Plymouth estate, as it's called, mm. the Earl of Plymouth. So this particular floor is what they call quarry tile or manufactured tiles. So they either had flagstones or quarry tiles, which were very expensive. But, uh, you know, this is the days before fitted carpets. Mm. Rugs would, they would have had quarry tiles and rugs, not even carpets, you know. So since this uh, floor and things generally not very decorative, if you look at it in presents, like... Oh, no, no, they just vary from the just, you know. yeah. You know, the whole, that's the entrance hall, so obviously a bit for guests coming in, it's a bit more decorative. Very rare anybody outside the family would come into this room. They would go to the parlour there, or, or the dining room, which was the yeah. social part of the house, if you like. Yeah. So this was this the... Was, this was the living, the uh, box standard living. Uh, the, the private family room. Yeah. The servants' quarters would be sparser than the, uh, mm. than the uh, servants were expendable and replaceable. <laughs> so who was the last tenant to live here? Well, well I, I could give you a name, but uh, <laughs> nothing peculiar about the fire, apart from the fact that it has an oven on the side there. So they could do some cooking in there. But the main kitchen is through there. You know, they might want to warm something up in the evening when the servants are gone to bed. Very informative, yet interesting that he makes no mention of the mysterious happenings surrounding that very room. Thank you to Mr Kingston for joining us today. We hope to, you get to the bottom of this mystery and that you find your production team alive and well. Thank you. Is their disappearance a coincidence? Is that room really haunted? What is the truth and who is hiding it?